Every single Illuvial has four special attributes that you need to know if you want to start capturing them in the overworld or if you want to build your own deck for the auto battler. And this, even if you never played an auto battler before. And let's start right away with the most noticeable attribute and maybe the most misunderstood one, the Omega Ability. The Omega Ability is a special ability which is unique for each Illuvial and every Illuvial will cast their Omega Ability only where their energy bar is full. For instance, Rafire's Omega Ability allows him to fly into the air and create a big rain of fire before diving into its target and deal even more extra damage. Does it mean that we will need to learn all the 150 different Omega Abilities? Not really. A stage 2 Illuvial such as Axon has just an enhanced Omega ability than the stage 1 Illuvial like Atlas. And a stage 3 Illuvial such as Axon has just an enhanced ability than the stage 2 Illuvial like Axon. You have to look it that way. The Omega ability truly defines the design of an Illuvial and how it will fight in the arena. Let's continue with the second attribute which is the class. And this one can be confusing especially for people who never played an auto battler before. Each Illuvial has only one class which can be a primary class like Bulwark, Rogue, Fighter, Empath, or Scion or a composite class which is the combination of two classes. Don't worry, I will explain to you the differences a bit later but first I need to properly explain how classes work in the auto battler so you will be able to understand the differences. The classes give in-fight bonuses that strengthen the overall power of the concerned Illuvial. For instance, if you want to benefit from the bonus defensive stats from Bulwark, you will be forced to field on the board at the very least 3 Bulwark units and if you field 6 Bulwark units or 9 Bulwark units, you gain even more bonus stats for all the concerned Illuvials. It also means that if you have only 2 Bulwarks, then the bonus is not activated and no one is gaining bonuses. For composite classes like Invoker or Harbinger, the activation threshold is 2, 3 and 4. So now you understand that you need a specific amount of units which cover the same classes in order to activate the bonuses, let's talk about the differences between the primary class and the composite class. Every stage 1 Illuvian can only have a primary class and every stage 3 Illuvials always has a composite class. As for the stage 2 Illuvial, sometimes they have a primary class and sometimes they have a composite class. While an Illuvial with a primary class can only benefit from one bonus, the Illuvials with a composite class can benefit from up to three bonuses. If we take Runfire as an example, which is a Slayer, and in case you didn't know, Slayer is the combination of Rogue and Fighter. Then and it means that the Rogue Fire can gain bonuses from Rogue, Fighter and Slayer at the same time if the three of them are activated. So these stage 2 and stage 3 Illuvials are critical to have because they will naturally bring a lot of classes and synergies and then bonuses for the team. Remember that the class of an Illuvial defines its role in a fight. Some will be specialized to tank, others will be specialized to deal physical or energy damage and others will be specialized to support the team thanks to healing and shielding. There are other details about composite classes and their effects, but I think it will require an entire video dedicated for it. So don't hesitate to subscribe to this channel if you are interested in watching more educational videos about Illuvium. Honestly, if you understood how classes work, this one about affinities will be a piece of cake for you. Just like for classes, there are five primary affinities. Water, Earth, Fire, Nature and Air. And then we also have Composite Affinities which is a mix of two primary affinities. Every stage 1 Illuvial can only have a primary affinity and every stage 3 Illuvial always has a Composite Affinity. As for the stage 2 Illuvials, sometimes they have a primary affinity and sometimes they have a composite affinity. While an Illuvial with a primary affinity can only benefit from one bonus, the Illuvials with a composite affinity can benefit from up to three bonuses. For instance, Seer has a composite affinity which is composed of Earth and Fire. It is called Magma. Then it means that Seer will benefit from the Fire bonus, the Earth bonus, and the Magma bonus if they are activated on the field. Just like for the classes, it will be critical to have as many composite affinities as possible 
because they will help to activate a lot of bonuses and it will strengthen your overall team power. While the classes define the role of an individual within the team, the affinities define the theme of your team which is played around your Illuvial. For instance, if you play Atlas, it can easily fit a water-based team, but if you play Seer, maybe you want to have a team based around fire and earth. There are some other mechanics like how some affinities counter some other affinities, but it's very complex and it requires a dedicated video. All I can say is that it's very different from Pokemon and I will take the time needed in order to make a clear video for you. And finally, the last attribute, which is probably the most boring one, but it's still necessary to understand. I'm talking about the Illuvial core stats. Each Illuvial has its own core stats, which will matter during the fights. And this is where we can find the main difference between a tier 1 Illuvial, like the Axolotl line, and a tier 5 Illuvial, like the Pterodactyl line. By the way, you can easily recognize the tier of an Illuvial by simply looking at the top of the card and by counting the number of rectangles here. So what are the main differences between a tier 1 Illuvial and a tier 5 Illuvial? Let's compare Tatopi, a stage 1 and tier 1 Illuvial which is a Cyan Illuvial designed to deal energy damage. And we have on the other hand Alfie, a stage 1 and tier 5 Illuvial which is also a Cyan Illuvial designed to deal energy damage. We can see that Tatopi has a mastery point of 30. In case you don't know yet, when you play the game you have to fix the amount of resources called mastery point and you need to use these mastery points to put an illuvial on the board. If you sell an illuvial you will get back the same amount of mastery point you paid earlier. But for Alfie, if we want to play Alfie and put it on the board, we will need to pay 50 mastery points. And we can also notice that Alfie has much more HP than Tatopi and so we can expect Alfie to resist longer to any source of damage. In other words, the higher the tier of an Illuvial, the more expensive it becomes in order to play it, but it also has more core strength like maximum health or damage. However, you have to make sure that you have always a good balance between tier 1 Illuvial and tier 5 Illuvials. Even though the tier 5 Illuvials are definitely stronger, it still requires much more resources to be able to play them and in the game you probably won't have enough resources to play only tier 5 Illuvials so you have to optimize your mastery points. If we look back at the 4 attributes every Illuvial has, we have the Omega ability which defines the design of an Illuvial, the class which defines the role of the Illuvial, the affinity which defines the theme of the team we want to play and finally the core stats which define the cost to play the Illuvial and its core strength. But if you want to go further and you want to understand everything about Omega abilities and how they actually work in order to plan your perfect Illuvial team, then I suggest you to check the video that is appearing now.